Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're gonna be going through this fancy new thing that I purchased, which is this. Bought it off Etsy, give you a close up. Some of you may know what it is, some of you might not, but this is for the air assist on that Thunder Nova 51. It's basically a pressure gauge giving you the reading of how many PSI your machine is putting out. This will make it 10 times easier to be able to adjust the PSI and pressure in a more fine uh, number scale. Versus before, it's number of turns, 12 to the left, you want it to be one tight, whatever it is. This will solve that issue by being able to make it so I want it to have two PSI. I'm running at two PSI because it gives a digital reading of that. So today, we're gonna be installing that right here on the machine. This is the unit. You have your digital gauge, you have these buttons. They're gonna be unscrewed and put through here. And then these are your knobs. The knobs are still gonna be shown so that you can adjust the air pressure up and down either side, but be able to get a digital reading on this. Out of the back, you have a Y NPT hookup. And then you also have the electrical. On the electrical, it says two sensor, two light. That makes it so every time this machine turns on, it's hardwired into the actual unit, which makes it 10 times easier, 10 times cooler. This automatically turns on. You don't have to have batteries, none of that BS. So now we're gonna get into installing it. I have not actually watched a video yet on how to install, so we're gonna see what I can do and if I can do it without actually having to watch a video to show you guys how easy it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is in here, there are some clips that we are gonna unscrew on the back of these buttons. That will make it so these wiggle just a little bit and start to come out. Once you get that unscrewed, looks like there's a washer, a nut, and then this button just slides in. It is wired up. So I am gonna grab my phone and take a photo of the wires to make sure they are in the exact spot when I put them back. Now that I got a photo of it, I can go ahead and unplug these. I'm gonna wiggle them loose. You just wanna make sure that you are not breaking the teat off the actual, so that there is also a gasket right here that is basically on the top to seal it. Don't lose that as well. These are in there very tight. Be careful, because you don't want to break these pegs off. There might be other ways to get them out, but this is how we're going to do it. You have reached Thunder Laser USA technical support. I'm going to send an email. So guys, I messed up. The wiggle method is not the way to go. Grab a pair of needle nose players, grab the wire and pull so that you're coming straight off. If you wiggle, these leads are so small that they're probably gonna break off, which you can kind of see it, but two of mine broke off. I've reached out to Thunder, it is 1.40 p.m. on a Thursday. We will see how long it takes for them to respond to see what I have to do to get a new button. I'm hoping the easiest solution is I will use the high powered button, which is the same exact thing on the low powered side, I use low air just about everything. We'll install this one and then once the new button comes in, all we'll have to do is just put it in, plug it, and then we can stick the actual unit itself down. Okay, that was extremely quick guys. It was 140 when I sent the email, it is now 142. They sent me a link of where I can get the actual button, which is insane. It was actually a response from Brian Bell. He is the best person to deal with in all aspects. So I'm gonna order that real quick. All right guys, so if you look in here in the back, there is a welded on clamp. You're going to take it out of the top guide and leave it as it, and then feed the wires back up through the holes. There's a couple zip ties you have to undo to get to that point, which are connecting to the airlines and the keeping the wires all together. You have to feed them back down through, so then they're kind of loose in here, and then you're gonna feed them up through the holes. Now, what you do, one of these are gonna go through the high side, one of these are gonna go through the low side. Just like the angry craftsman did, I'm going to feed my wire down through the low pressure side. It is very long, but we'll figure out what to do and um, how to hide all the cables. 
after we get this wired up. And as you can see, I threaded my one button in. I did put the metal piece back on and I did put the nut back on. So then technically I can start to connect the wires back which before I do any of that, I have to pull up the photo on my phone to see which one goes with. That's my photo. So yellow is the far one, blue is the middle one, black is the outside. So that is fed through. And then I will stick this hose through the high side. Through the high side, I will connect it back to the NPT. The way it's gonna be is everything is gonna seat back down. So it will be up high enough to read high and low here. You'll wanna make sure it's level. And then as long as all the wires are fed through, it should be fairly easy to put everything together. There will have to be some cleaning up on this side. And then also I have to run this. Cause I think this just plugs into, okay, it says, it says two light, two sensor, and then that fits into the opposite side. I'm going to unplug the light. This one is gonna to be too light, like that. And the other one, so that's connected. So I'm going to unhook here and I'm gonna take care of some zip tie work real quick. So if you look at this, this is the Y coupling that goes in. This is what comes out of the controller. So this is the tube coming out of the bottom of the laser. That's the Y we connected. The short piece is in between there. And then this Y splits up to the turn knobs. The lighter tube goes up to the gauge, which is on top. These will then be zip tied tight over here once I get a chance. Same with this cable as well. Now I'm gonna take the zip ties and start winding some of these cables up to get them up and out of the way. I'm gonna zip tie it up here at the top so that it will stay and it won't get in the way of anything. No one likes sloppy work, so make sure you clip your zip ties. So that's that cable. There's not a ton of slack on the high cable. Also, guys, if you're smart, unlike me, I would have run the laser head all the way to the back so it's out of the way completely, but I got space for one more small zip tie holding these cables up. Tuck your wires up get them out of the way, and then you're kind of good as long as your head can move freely without having anything in the way, you'll have no issues. Now it's time to turn it on. So I have the machine on. This is what it looks like. Obviously it's not mounted because I have a bushel full of wires. Hopefully I don't need high air for a couple days. I should be good. Most of the time I'm using low air anyways. So this is what it looks like. You can kind of see the screen, push that. The more I open, or close, you're gonna reading. Goes all the way up to 2.5 PSI. The problem I see is that some of the readings, when it's on the real low wisp of air, it's not gonna sense anything at all. It's about eight turns is when it hits 0.1 PSI. I wish it had more of a decimal point or a deeper reading. I just wish this unit had more than two numbers and it went to 0 .0001 or something along those lines, even if it could read that. That is it guys, I am done. I actually have some projects to start working on today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I think it's right there. If you guys liked the video, please come back next week. I'm trying to post weekly content. It is very tough sometimes. Thank you, Angry Craftsman on YouTube. You're the video that I followed. You are the reason why I was able to install mine and we will see you next week.